What's up, Sim Racers? Larry TJR Sim here. Today, I want to cover my review of the Sim Magic GTS wheel. That is, it's been actually a pretty fine wheel. I've been using this for a couple weeks. It's a wheel. It doesn't take long to review these. They either work really good, and you like the size of them, you like the functionality of it, or you don't. So, I'm gonna give you my opinions on it. Who I think it's for, and let's get on with it. All right, so let's get on to the details here. So. With the Sim Magic GTS wheel here, we've got, uh, you know, it comes in either leather or Alcantara, the leather being 339 and the Alcantara being 359. I actually like the Alcantara, as you can tell. Uh, it does have a leather uh, stripe here, indicator stripe for centering. Uh, that is leather. Uh, and then, of course, with the button arrangement here, everything is LED lit up, as you can see here. Um, We've got the the seven uh, seven uh, digital or seven rather uh, uh, buttons here, RGB buttons here, customizable with colors. You got your two hat switches or your seven way funky switches. Which I mean, just between these two alone, you got fourteen buttons, uh, which is really good for menu systems and um, and then um, uh, doing say like for your your controlling of your car uh, cockpit cameras and stuff is really handy for the. Then you have the two uh, rotary uh, dials down here as well. These are our, our nice um, clicking indentation between these two. Very, very precise. You're not going to just rip through them in, in, in any fashion, for that matter. You're, it's going to be, you know, one or two clicks, right? So I'll give you a little indicator, or you can listen to see how these actually sound. So, and then here's the buttons. So yeah, standard stuff. Now here's your paddle shifters here as well, as you can hear them, sound really good. Actually it's very good um, <clears throat> carbon fiber, uh, they feel really nice is what, I, what I'm trying to say here. The nice warm feeling, a little bit different than say in the cold metal shifters. Aesthetically they look kick ass. I love the uh, carbon fiber of these, uh, well actually it is carbon fiber but uh, I like the feel of them. They look kick ass and yeah nice indentation. Now they have a little rubber piece in here that's uh, that you know buffens the sound rather uh, when you're using them and then also you'll see, look at this B camera here the uh, the the um, adjustment here where you're I'm all the way in here as far as this uh, shifter goes you can of course adjust it all the way out uh, to you know a little bit further out right as you can adjust it here uh, which is nice the only downside I see there's actually only two downsides I see with this wheel uh, set up in uh, one I'll cover in a minute when we go into the menu system for the lights, but uh, this angle here is not adjustable. You can't you can't swing this up or out in any fashion. So it is what it is. Uh, so you got about an uh, about an inch inch and a half right here uh, distance uh, between you know the rim and the paddle itself. So just keep that in mind. If you got some big old sausage fingers, you might not like <laughs> that aspect of it. But uh, yeah, it's, it works fine for these Texas hands. Uh, I, I do find myself sometimes when I'm just trying to get used to it into a different wheel that I tend to, when I'm, when I'm over here driving, I tend to rake my fingers across here because it is a little bit closer instead of you know going out. So it's just a little bit of training yourself to, you know, to move it in and out, right? Uh, that would be even more of a problem if these were further out for me. That's why I have them adjusted all the way in uh, so it's easier to get in uh, in there. So uh, yeah, just something, something I noticed. And sometimes I'm actually holding the wheel, you know, right, tightly. And uh, I may, you know, come close to hitting my fingers here um, on the inside. So that's yeah, just something to keep in mind. But QR, QR50, normal quick release uh, NRG style, everything labeled nicely Sim Magic. I love the anodization that they have here for the uh, for the red accents here. Just I, I like the red accents they have. Now, uh, speaking of uh, red here, so you got the stitching here. It's all red and it stops here at this at the thumb grip area here, which is nice. I really like that. It keeps you from snagging on your hands or your gloves and, and then ripping out stitching over time, which is really good. 
but uh, really appreciate that they did that. The gluing here is pretty good. Let's get it here uh, uh, closer on this camera, so you can see you can see the line where it's glued in as well. Uh, but very good details, very nice cut, you know, like precision cuts there. How they how they put it all the way around here. So hopefully this will last. Uh, you can see they split here on the on the back side. Man, maybe you can, maybe you can't on the camera. Oops. There we go. You can see the little split there going down this way for the glued seamed. So, uh, yeah, there you go. You can see it better on this side here, actually. That seam going down, so where they wrap it around and glue it. That way you have a nice solid no seam on this side, but the seam on the back side. So, yeah, nicely done. I really like it. As you can see with the lights here now, I went with the 300 millimeter wheel. Uh, this is 1.45 kgs. I actually originally in the unboxing thought it was much lighter than the GT Neo. The GT Neo is actually 1.1. Um, so yeah, I guess it's just a little bit, um, I guess because it's so compact on the GT Neo, this one actually felt lighter because the weights distributed a little bit further out, right? or throughout the whole product. Uh, as you can see here, I got my other rim here. This is what I was using, a D-shaped rim, Sparco uh, rim here. And uh, this is a 320 millimeter, is, is why I brought it out. So just to give you a comparison, 300, here's a 320 as well. Uh, see if I can get this lined up here. Hopefully my head cam is picking this up uh, really good. But yeah, you can see that it's, it, you know, it's slightly bigger, right? Um, so this is probably my perfect size that I like, a 320. They don't offer a 320. They offer uh, a 325 and a 330 and obviously the 300. And here's another one for comparison. Here is the 330. I'll put that bad boy in there. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger uh, than all of them. This is what I was trying out as well. It's actually pretty close to the same type of material uh, as the as the uh, Sim Magic as well. But this is a I don't know this this is kind of some kind of sport finish as well. But uh, it feels it feels good. But this gets a little bit rougher in my hands for some reason when it's spinning fast. But anyway, back to the sides here. 330 is a little bit too large for my liking. Uh, I think it's it, you definitely can tell the the uh, the advantages you would have with a bigger rim, you know, it's less rotation, uh, basically. Uh, you have a little bit more leverage with a 330. Uh, spinning a little bit slower, actually, uh, as well, since your, your, your diameter is bigger. But yeah, I just didn't dig it. it I, I tried it for, uh, I mean, a few weeks, actually, and uh, I, was, I was sporting this, but didn't like it. So I settled on the 300. Now, if you wanted to go with the 320, uh, you'll have to get their Pro Hub, the Pro K Hub, and then uh, match up a 325, rather. 325, not a 320, 325 rim. It's a D-shaped rim, so you'd have to live with a D-shape. Or you get their Pro uh, K Hub with the 330 rim on there. So there is those choices as well. Of course, you're gonna spend an extra 100 bucks for that one. I, you know, using rally racing, since I don't rally race consistently as much as I do for GT, uh, Three racing. Uh, I didn't want to spend the extra extra dough, although I did uh, see some value in it with the dual clutches and stuff with that one, but in all carbon fiber and stuff. So this one I think is perfect for for my needs. Uh, just kind of use some something to look at here. Maybe you find something in this wheel that'll match for what you need or what you desire. I will say here, it also has these indentations here that you can see on the top here. I'm gonna go to the B camera here so you can see it good too. So you have this little little step right here, basically a little flat and a step here. So your palms kind of fit right in there as well. I thought that was weird first. <laughs> Same thing here. Uh, I thought it was weird at first when I did the unboxing. I didn't ever notice that before on other rims. And other rims are generally just completely round, but it's actually a little bit of a comfort fe uh, feature there. So it, it works fine for me because this is where I'm actually holding it and you're indent indented a little bit there it's not intrusive by any means it doesn't bother me it is just something that i want to point out to y'all if you don't don't know about it what else can i say about this bad boy so so that pop out to be of course on the back for this is for when you want to uh update your firmware now as far as your firmware goes here your wheel is automatically recognized in the in the in the system here 
I'll see it turn on, go through its light sequence here. To get this matched up you know, Bluetooth wise, you gotta hold these two buttons down uh, for a few seconds and then it'll match up with the software. Let me just jump into the software, uh, of course, you know, because that's the final stage of this here and then I'll go to the conclusions after that. So let's look at the software. Alrighty, so let's go to the software here real quick. So as you can see here, I have the GTS wheel. I'm gonna expand here. On the software, what you have is your, your RPM gauge, your individual buttons here as well, all labeled. And uh, I wanna point out, you can hot swap this wheel uh, with your GT Neo, and I assume others as well, because the, the uh, button input sequences for the paddle shifters is the exact same number between the wheels. So they, they smartly kept everything the same, right? Uh, to where you can hot swap off and, and not have to reprogram your buttons to uh, to reprogram your mapping rather in game uh, to get the buttons to work. So that was really good. Now, obviously, if you have a wheel like this that has less buttons than say the G2 Neo, you're going to drop some some other features on some games uh, that are just not going to register right. But other buttons they they register just fine. So for instance, these funky switches here, these seven way hat configs. These are exactly the same. So whatever I mapped on my GT Neo is mapped here as well. So uh, when you want to keep your main menu buttons and, and your uh, whatever features you want to put on these buttons will carry over between each wheel, which is really nice. And now I do find that something like my look back button or, or my camera view would be thrown around somewhere else in here because maybe this is button three right here, but on the GT Neo button three is around here, right? Uh, so that'll get rearranged slightly, but the core of it all stays the same, which is your paddle shifters and then uh, whatever your funky switches are. So that's, that was a nice little addition that I saw. So I just figured I want to point that out. Now on uh, the other downside, there's only two, two that I didn't, this, that I, uh, two negatives, I guess, rather on this wheel, which was the adjustment of the paddle shifters, as I showed you, and then the lighting here. The lighting, of course, you can go full blast but there's not individual lighting. So when you come over here to the RPM gates, you can disable your flash. Uh, you can change your flashes off or different RPMs and stuff. You can also double click on here and change your percentages when you want it to flash on each one. A lot of people didn't know about this when I did the GT Neo, but just so to point it out again here, you can actually change that. And of course you can add, add the colors where you want to or change the colors. You can individually select all of them. Maybe I want those all to be blue instead of red. Uh, quick change and stuff so that's all real nice but there's no adjustment in actual this right so that's not adjustable like gt neo that's adjustable with the brightness level for the rpm now it's not necessarily a big deal for most uh, for some people some others may may want that feature but i like it for when i do a lot of night racing or evening racing with the lights off because it's more immersive sim race at that time for me uh i like these buttons to be dimmed and then i like my uh PM buttons to be flashing bright and loud right uh so i don't have that so you just have this global setting and i imagine it's because all these are probably wired as the same dimmer switch uh between them all it's not hopefully then to magic can come come and do an update for the software and make this individual as well or maybe in the future they upgrade this this uh wheel to have that separation right so that, that would be my suggestion for an upgrade for this wheel but it's not a big deal but it is something that is a nice feature that they they promote on the on the later wheels and so i would love to see it carried over to this one as well now you do have your your normal your normal tele telemetry feedback so you can have your flashing lights here you see here at the bottom uh, off abs traction control pit drs and flag that's all the same uh, so yeah, that all works good uh, now you could use i guess uh, what is it called sim labs no sim hub to change the lighting and stuff i don't believe this one will work someone in the comments maybe can uh let me know if sim hub works with this particular wheel but as far as i understand you'd have to be connected to the pc for sim hub to recognize this so that's why you need that extra hub uh, that uh, usb hub hookup for your Neo actually to work with SimHub, right? So, but yeah, I don't think that would work. I haven't tried it. I, I, I'm not bothered with the SimHub software. I think it's great software, very expansive, but this is good enough for me. I, I don't have to dive too deeply into the other stuff. I may look into it as far as the haptics go uh, for their motors, but for this for this review here, this just letting you know uh, what I see. So, all in all, a really cool ass wheel. I like it. Uh, let's get into the final conclusion here because that's pretty much covers everything for the electronics of the wheelbase here. 
All right, so <clears throat> conclusion, who's this wheel for? This is really for your GT style racing wheel. Uh, you know, is it playing, say, Forza or, or um, Simcade games, or anybody's playing, say, a set of Corsa where you have the road cars and stuff, rally racing, of course. This is a right really general overall wheel, is what it's, what it's presented as uh, to be. So, for GT racing and rally and drifting, actually, for that matter, I think it's a little too small for drifting uh, myself. This would be spinning way too fast. I would rather have a 330 for drifting. Uh, I think but 320 is actually my absolute favorite which is 10 millimeters wider on each side but this I think works just fine for a compromise to have a really nice integrated button box to the sim magic you know, system here great quick release as well my favorite quick release ever nice carbon fiber shifters here there are some adjustments for it going out which is great uh, in my opinion and I love the LED buttons uh, they just look really crisp of course it comes with different sticker kits on this one which was nice and the unboxing you can see all the stickers that I that I uh, pulled out of the box but I utilized some of them that just made sense for me uh, and stuff the RPM gauge is nice and bright uh, individual LED lights on it as well look really good uh, very noticeable in game uh, and during the day it's night daytime I'll run this at full brightness uh, nighttime I'll dim it just a little bit which really the default dimmer uh, that I use on there uh, all aluminum construction I went with the Alcantara as you can tell here really like it very supple it doesn't burn my hands when it's when it's when it's sliding fast uh, through rotation especially on on rally racing here and uh, I love the warm feeling of the carbon fiber uh, paddle shifters and just overall it's a really good wheel now if it's for you or not I don't know but uh, I'm enjoying it if you are curious in, in getting these rims I would recommend apex sim racing this is where I bought it with my own money it's apex sim racing I buy all my gear I don't know if you know but all my gear that I buy is with my own money I don't make uh, I don't earn enough in the YouTube community here to actually use that, but what money I do earn, I just put back into this business here uh, as my hobby. And uh, But I have affiliate links to those that I feel are really good shops to buy from, uh, that I have personal experience with that I buy from, not just promoting some shop that's random shop that I can make some cash off of. I don't really care. Money's not an incentive for me. What is an incentive for me is to give uh, reviews on products and my opinion to give my opinion, of course, to y'all, uh, the other sim racers, the glorious sim racers out there, right? So this is uh, from a sim racer to another sim racer, what I like, and hopefully it portrays through the video. So anyway, Apex Sim Racing, I do love their shop. Really good service, fast delivery. Check them out if, you, if you're interested. And the affiliate links are on my link tree as well. So that is it. Again, enjoying this wheel. Maybe you will too. Check it out if you're interested in or look at the rest of the lines that they have. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you on the track. I'm out.